away until he is impeached. The lame duck non-stop impeachment scorched earth policy will be unleashed when the newly elected Democrats take their seats in the House in January 2019. Signs of the oncoming impeachment inquisition are already bursting at the seams. Democrats are lining up to get on House Judiciary because they're expecting it to be the place where the action is, in part, of course, because Nadler would be in a position to preside over any potential impeachment proceedings. If you try to impeach him without the Republicans coming on board to actually remove him, it is a waste of time, it's a waste of political capital, and it will lead to the Democrats losing their majority and Donald Trump being re-elected president in 2020. But if you put your ear to the ground in the District of Criminals, you can hear the tick-tock of any hope of draining the swamp counting down, as Hillary likely sits on a mountain of blackmail defending her laundry list of crimes from seeing the light of day. Even more chilling is the fact that the FBI, who apparently get their marching orders from the Clinton syndicate, raided a whistleblower's home recently, as the Daily Caller reported 16 agents arrived at the home of Dennis Nathan Kane. The raid was permitted by court order signed on November 15th by Federal Magistrate Stephanie A. Gallagher in the U.S. District Court for Baltimore and obtained by the Daily Caller. A special agent from the FBI's Baltimore Division who led the raid charged that Kane possessed stolen federal property and demanded entry to his private residence. Kane's lawyer, Michael Sakara, said Kane informed the agent while he was still at the door that he was a recognized protected whistleblower under the intelligence community Whistleblower Protection Act, and that Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz recognized his whistleblower status. Kane further told the FBI agent the potentially damaging classified information had been properly transmitted to the Senate and House Intelligence Committees as permitted under the Act. The agent immediately directed his agents to begin a sweep of the home anyway. Kane then promptly handed over the documents, yet even after surrendering that information to the FBI, the agents continued to rummage through through the home for six hours. Kane had come across the potentially explosive information while working for an FBI contractor. The raid on Kane preceded a scheduled hearing of U.S. Attorney John Huber, which was supposedly delayed due to the funeral procession of former President Bush. Under former Attorney General Jeff Sessions, Huber had investigated the Mueller and the Clintons' involvement in Uranium One, the backdoor dealings of the Clinton Foundation, and the Obama administration's alleged surveillance of then-candidate Donald Trump. There was extreme bias in the Department of Justice, the, the uh, world's premier law enforcement organization, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, where tens of thousands of people every day work hard to keep us safe, fight crime, and yet several people near the top of this organization uh, engaged in activities in handling one investigation involving one presidential candidate extremely differently, bending over backwards to, to uh, not uh, find reasons to take action with regard to Hillary Clinton or her employees. And on the other hand, uh, having uh, insurance policies and secret plans to take action in uh, another area. Meanwhile, after giving up the fight to dispute a subpoena, former FBI Director James Comey goes to the Hill on Friday to privately answer to the House Judiciary Committee for the anti-Trump bias that ran rampant through the upper echelons of the FBI. His testimony is supposed to be available to the public within 24 hours. As Bill Priestap, number two intelligence with the FBI on the Russian investigation and Hillary's email scandal, is leaving the FBI. What this means means is that with his departure, there are no longer any FBI officials tied to those investigations from the beginning at the department. The deep state has essentially cleaned up their crime scene after having colluded to take out the executive office of the United States. Those of us that have conducted federal criminal investigations know that you use the grand jury, you use search warrants, you don't hand out immunities like candy. I mean, everything in that investigation runs contrary to the way uh, a real credible, thorough and FBI investigation is conducted. Time is swiftly running out, and the Democrats who have maintained the criminal Clinton narrative are plotting their revenge. It would be complete folly to pretend that Obama and the Clintons don't have a guiding hand in the coming malevolence. John Bound reporting.